So I filmed the entire video without turning on my mic first. And that's, that's what I get for filming at a different time of day. I have studio lights on cause it is dark outside. Peter is here with us. Hopefully, hopefully he'll be quiet cause they're kind of snuggling and being cutesy fluffy finches together right now. Anyway, I wanted to talk to y'all about printers and just kind of my journey and trying to make a good decision about a printer. As some of y'all know from previous videos, I am going to be starting up selling stickers again and um, continue to sell my art prints and things like that. And so I am really wanting to be able to do those things in my studio. So that meant I had to get a really nice printer. I did a little poll on Instagram asking, you know, if people would be interested in hearing my thoughts about how I made my decision. And a bunch of people were very interested because most of us are printing a lot of stuff to put into our paper crafts or whatever. So getting a nice printer is a good thing. It's an investment. I feel like lately printers have been so disposable. Um, the last three printers I've bought, they've just felt so cheap. I don't know why that is. This little printer I bought was $40 at Walmart. And I was like, wow, it's a cheap printer. But the cartridges to fill it back up are $40. So I've paid for that printer like five or six times since I've had it. And um, <laughs> that's where they get you is the ink. So that's part of what I wanna talk about today too. So all that to say, I wanted to share my thoughts with you and share the printer that I'm choosing to get. The printers that I was going back and forth uh, with are not entry level, meaning they're like 800 to $1,000. They're not, they're not less than that. I'm sure though, there are printers that are like in a lesser model range or whatever, but I did not research those, but I wanted to kind of tell you like what my criteria was and making the decision. Cause maybe you can ask those questions when you are looking at the different lower models or whatever. Also, I got my flipper. I don't know if you can tell, like I have no gaps in my teeth, but it's like a retainer thing. And so, it makes me talk funny. Like I'm trying to get used to the talking. On to printers. So what kind of things are you wanting to print? Are you wanting to print stickers, photos, uh, art reproductions? That's a big thing to figure out. Are you wanting to print small? Are you wanting to pay, print big? Ask yourself what you wanna print. For me, I need to print on sticker papers, different kinds of sticker paper. I wanna print on like a fine art paper to reproduce my own art. And I wanna print like big. So this printer that I am looking at, it, it can do 11 by 14 and I, it actually can go bigger, but I'm not interested in going bigger because then you have to start rolling the prints in like tubes and sending them in tubes. And right now I have a big enough rigid mailer that I can just ship it in the big envelope. But it's interesting that I could make a huge print if I wanted to, but I didn't feel like I needed to go any bigger than that. But I liked the fact that I could print an 11 by 14. The printers that I was looking at, the two that I was going back and forth, and they're kind of, they're not really the same type of printer. And I'll, and I'll explain that too, but it was the Epson EcoTank 8550 and the Canon Pro 300. Both of them do large prints. They both do really good quality prints, but the difference is the Epson is a dye based inkjet and the Canon is a pigment based inkjet. And what does that mean? So it means that the dye is not considered archival, whereas the pigment is. So if you're wanting to get something that lasts a hundred plus years, you want to print it out on pigment ink. It's like their fancy ink or whatever. Dye is not like going to be hanging on a wall and then 50 years, it's going to just start degrading on a wall or something. It's just, they can't guarantee that the colors are going to be as vibrant. They just can't guarantee it. I think if they said like museum, whatever environment, like 50 years is what they give it. Again, I think that's just them not able to guarantee the life of the print. So that's the difference. I did a poll on Instagram asking if people even knew the difference. When they were buying stickers, did they look to see if they were pigment, you know, printed or dye printed? And a lot of like a majority of people were just, they didn't even know the difference or they didn't care. Only 5% of the people in my poll, I want the stickers to last a hundred years. And I was like, okay, cool. So that was helpful for me to know that I'm not going to deter too many people if I cho chose the dye based. When you talk about ink also, like I said before, you have to think about the cost of it. So like this printer behind me, I paid for the printer six times 
and cartridges. With the Canon Pro, it's a lot of money to buy the whole package of the, I mean, I think it's like maybe 12? Like, it's like a bunch of little baby cartridges with tons of different colors. And it does beautiful, beautiful work, but it's very, very expensive. With the Eco Tank, it's expensive to get into it, you know, to buy the Eco Tank 8550, but you get the bottles of ink, you fill them up, and then supposedly it's supposed to last like two years without you having to touch the tanks again. I have watched quite a few videos of like artists who print out their own work and they have been able to testify that they don't put a dent after print, after print, after print, after print, that they print out their stuff quite a bit and they haven't seen the tank lower at all. So that's kind of cool. The other printing company I was looking at was HP, but I heard, I did hear some good things about them. And then I heard one gal lately that was like, no, they're sketch. I keep track of my pages that I print and they don't send my cartridges when I'm close to that mark. Cause you pay via, you pay on a subscription and it's based on how many pages that you print. So she keeps track of them. And then she was saying they're sketchy at best. And so I, I heard that and then I was thinking to myself, if I'm wanting to have a little more control over what I'm able to do in my home, I don't wanna to have to be relying on HP to send me something. I would much rather just have ink bottles, you know, stashed away that I can use to fill up my tanks. So that was important. So I decided to stop looking at the HP. Plus I've had, I have two Epson printers right now. I have this little Epson printer behind me, which is just like a little office, you know, jet thing. And then I have the Epson Picture Mate 400, which I have really enjoyed. This little, it's like a baby inkjet printer and it does fabulous photos. Epson's kind of earned my trust in that capacity. Ink accessibility, cost of ink. That's a really big thing to consider. Software compatibility, that's another thing I considered. I remember when I did have a Canon Pixma before, I had two Canon Pixmas before I switched over to this Epson and I was so frustrated because Canon, software does not always play nice with Mac computers. And I remember wanting to throw the printer and do a whole like office space scene with my printer because I could not get it to connect. I would always have to disconnect it, like restart things. It was a nightmare. So far my Epson has been pretty awesome with my Mac. I've had to update the driver I think once and that's no big deal. It's pretty normal that you have to update drivers, but it plays nice with the Mac. And so I didn't want to have to deal with the frustration of that possibly again. The speed of print is another thing that I was considering. Canons, though they have the pigment, that's really the pro for me for the Canon Pro 300 is the pigment based ink, but they are slow apparently, like really slow. And when you're printing stickers, time is really money. Like you need to get those sheets printed out so you can start cutting and you don't want to be waiting there. Like your cutter will be done by the time you're printing out those sheets. So the Epson is a bit faster with printing out. One artist had does like comic books and she says she did 28 pages in 20 minutes. And though that is longer than most of your smaller entry level printers, um, I still think that's still faster than what the Canon people were saying for their speeds of print. So that was really important for me to make sure that I could still maintain the quality of the stickers, but then they would get out at a decent time. I think that was it for cost of ink, the accessibility to ink, the type of products you're gonna make, software compatibility, speed of print, dye versus pigment, size of prints. I will say this too, when you're producing your own art stickers, whatever, there's a few different things in play for the final product to be as good as what you are creating on your table. So like most sticker maker people, most people, do their designs in Procreate. So it's already digital. They just send it, you know, to their Cricut software or their, what is it that I have? Studio, Silhouette Studio or something. I use the Silhouette to cut stickers. They make their cut lines and everything, no big deal. I actually am a little bit different in that I, I love analog. I love painting with paint. I tried y'all, I tried to make a design for stickers in the Procreate and I just, wasn't 
getting it. Maybe I just need more practice, but I just wasn't feeling it. Now I did take my design that I did analog with paper and I did do a couple more things with it and procreate. That was kind of fun. And I could probably do that again and again. But what I do is I like actually do the art on my table. I invited, invested in a really nice scanner. That scanner, oh my gosh, mwah, it's also an Epson. It's the Perfection V550. It does so good scanning my art. And I really enjoy the ease of like being able to correct the colors on the sidebar there. It's just a really easy scanner to use and it does really great work. So you have to have a good scanner. You have to have to, the know-how of how to kind of, I, I tweak my art just a little bit and Photoshop just to make it nice and crisp and to kind of make up for the loss when you're scanning it. And then you have your printer. So I did ask another sticker maker if she would mind disclosing the printer that she used obviously telling her you have every right to say no i value your no if you don't want to disclose that and she didn't want to she didn't want to disclose it she wasn't comfortable doing that but i kind of feel like for myself it's such a part of the whole thing i don't do digital art like like they do i just do my art art you know um so i'm totally cool with sharing what i got and so what i'm getting is the epson eco tank 8550 it is a tank system it does really big beautiful prints it is not pigment based it's dye based but from what i've seen on uh, some of these reviewers and techie people and the photos and the prints that are coming out oh my gosh it's so pretty like it does very bright colors the only thing that i have read is that sometimes the blues shift a little bit and that's very easily corrected post. But anyway, yeah, so that's what I'm getting. I'm really excited about it. I tend to have analysis paralysis when I make a big decision, because this is a big decision. It's like $800 and there's gonna be tax on top of it. It's a big investment for my business, but I wanna make sure that I am printing out good quality stuff for y'all and I'll be able to offer prints in my studio. I can do them in house. I can really control the colors because sometimes even with my pro lab, I'll get a print back and I'm like, that ain't right. That pink is not the right pink or whatever. So I'll have a little more control. Even though it's dye based, I still think it will bring joy to people. And I read this quote that was just super awesome. And it says, remember today is the tomorrow you worried about yesterday. And that's by Dale Carnegie. I need to stop worrying about if I'm making the right decision. I'm making the best decision that I can with the resource that I have, with the time that I have, and the same amount of time and energy that I've put into researching this printer, eight to 10 hours, I'll be able to exert a little bit of time and energy if something were to go awry with this new printer. I need to stop freaking out about like what of this and what of that you know so anyway those are all my thoughts about printers and hold on this is a very annoying saxophone i hope i don't get in trouble for having that in the background i totally forgot that it was playing like i said if you need something a little more entry level they do have like smaller level eco tank systems that i've heard really good things about the one thing i have heard across the board with all of your printers and make sure you do this. And I've had problems with this too. When I started printing out orders for my washi stuff that went out, the <laughs> packing slips had like huge blank spots. And then because I was pitching such a fit about having to buy a cartridge that cost the same cost as the printer that I didn't use the printer for like months. And so I had to do three deep cleanings on the printer for it to print out a decent packing slip so I could fulfill the orders. It was <laughs> crazy. So what I've across the board have seen is you really do with any printer, you should be printing something kind of a full color range with a nice deep black every week, every other week. That will keep your little sponges on your cartridges good. It'll keep your, your printer nozzles and stuff nice and clean and, and, and moist so that nothing dries up because I have just over and over again across these forums, across these blogs, people have said, oh, this will clog up if you don't do this. So that's across the board, Canon, HP, Epson, all of them, brother, all those printers, like you really should just be printing something, which is a good excuse for printing out a picture for your journal. I do four by six postage labels a lot and I will put them through this little picture mate and I get four photos on one postage label. It's just easy, easy, and it kind of keeps everything moist. It's good for your printer, it's good maintenance. I was six 
minutes faster <laughs> with this video. I'll be excited to show you some of the products that I'm making for my shop. I have a wedding. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. I have a wedding that I'm shooting in two days and the commissions from that wedding is what's gonna be paying for my new printer. <laughs> because I didn't have the funds to buy this printer on my own. I'm working another job to pay for the printer. So I'm excited to start printing on it and get the papers in. Those are all coming next week. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Thank you so much for spending your time and all the printer discussion today. I hope that was a helpful video for anyone that is investigating a new printer for their business or even if they want to get something nicer for their craft. Hopefully we'll be able to save you a little bit of time and you'll be able to get something that helps you out because I wish everybody success. I think there's enough pie for everybody. I just love it when other artists and designers are able to do what they love, offer fun products that bring others joy and can get some money from it also. Love y'all. Thank you so much for your encouragement and your support through all these years and I will see you later. Bye.